While most voters across Illinois are still making up their minds ahead of the June 28th primary, political hopefuls are already setting their sights on another contest that won't happen for another eight months. The race for Chicago mayor, and it got another two entrants this week. The first, Alderman Roderick Sawyer. Now, it's not official yet, but Sawyer says he's definitely running. He told WGN's Eric Rung his family legacy at City Hall was not a deciding factor. Well, uh, I was in. I, my, my thought process, I had talked to my family, to my children, to my wife, uh, my close friends, and, some, and people that were encouraging me and, and actually asking me to run. And I was of that opinion I was going to do it. Uh, it was not until yesterday when the call came to me while I was sitting in the barber shop and just asked a direct question. And I felt that she was owed a direct answer. And I gave the direct answer, yes, I'm running, even though I'm not ready to give the announcement yet, do all the things that are formally required of me to uh, get that ready. But I just want to express my intention that I do want to run, and I am running for mayor. Why do you want this job? <laughs> that is a very good question. A lot of people ask me that, including my wife. Um, you know, this is something, I'm a Chicagoan. I'm lifelong, been here all my life. Actually, I've lived in this community my entire life. Uh, but I just want to help. I just want to help us get past the things that we're worried about, uh, when we talk about violence, when we talk about education, economic development, and I think we have a path to get where we're going, but it has to be together. And sometimes that includes having tough conversations with each other and talking about what we can do to make all of our lives better. I think I can do that. I think I'll ha I have the ability, I have the intention to want to coalesce with other groups and other people. And I'm not afraid to have those tough conversations. I will bring it up and I will talk about it. And I think once we talk about it, we can resolve it. So that's where I am. Your father, of course, was mayor. Did that play into your decision? And what will that mean to you if you are elected? Well, I will answer the first question. No, it did not play in my decision. But I always think about because uh, if, if I played in my decision, I would probably vote against, uh, decide against it because I was there and I saw how rough the job is. I saw how rough uh, they, they went at my father and that was during a very tumultuous period. Uh, but it was a very difficult job, but he, he was up for the task. He, he did it because he shares the love of Chicago that I share. And in that regard, uh, I think my dad is always advising me, looking over me, giving me the advice that I think that I need uh, in a time like this. So. Uh, he's, he would not, you know, he would encourage this at this time in, in, in uh, what we're dealing with right now. And he would just tell me, you know, to run your race, uh, stay with focus on the issues, don't get involved in name calling, and, and just uh, stay forward, steady forward, and, and make sure that what you're doing is for the people, not for yourself. Sawyer joins businessman Willie Wilson, Southside Alderman Raymond Lopez, State Representative Cam Buckner, and former CPS CEO Paul Vallis in the race. Now, WGN political reporter Taman Bradley, he caught up with Vallis right after he announced his candidacy last week. And his first question, if you couldn't get it done three years ago, why do you think voters are going to choose you now? Here's what he said. You got about 5% of the vote last time. How are you going to get more this time? Well, you know, the, uh, different elections are are defined by different issues, and and, and I think uh, in the last election, crime was not front center. Uh, in the last election, you had not gone through uh, 15 months of schools being closed and the union forcing the mayor to keep schools closed for the better part of two years, and uh, and in the last election, the financial, the, you know, the taxes and fees and fines. We're not at the level they are now, so you know. So I think the the issues themselves will will drive the the voter decision making. And the three most important issues are uh, safe neighborhoods, uh, uh, quality educational choices, and an affordable city. And I think uh, um, uh, on those three issues, those are issues that I'll be strong on because I've had the experience in dealing with those type of issues uh, in my past administrative. Uh, uh, assignments. In your campaign video out today, you talk about police need to be allowed to do their jobs. What does that mean? We have a consent decree. We have rules they have to follow. Yeah, but that's not inconsistent with the consent decree. But but you know when you have when you have a seventy percent reduction in arrest rates, and you have 
historic increases in, in violent crime, not only in violent crime, but even less violent crime across the city. That means the police are being handcuffed. They're being handcuffed for three reasons. One is there's been a massive exodus of police officers because the police department has lost their confidence in the mayor and in the police leadership, uh, the, the present police leadership. Number two, uh, there's there are so many. I mean, the, the, you know, there uh, the police are being uh, are being told to focus on things like accumulating positive community interactions, you know, which district is going to have these more positive community interactions than going out and actually making arrests of people who are violating the law. So so you have like a, uh, the 11th district, which do, is one Do you of agree that police and community relations are strained? Yeah, well, it, oh, I, I believe that's, that's, that they're strained, but I think they're strained for a number of reasons. Um, they're strained, number one, because there's a lack of community policing. I mean, um, most of the uh, large numbers of police beats aren't even covered. You know, when you don't have a police at, on that local beat who you know and you recognize and you're familiar with, or for that matter, a police officer is not familiar with you or the community that they're serving, that undermines the type of uh, uh, relationship building that is critical to solving crimes and to protecting the community. So how do you fix that? You know, David Brown has the positive interaction, getting to know the community. Well, you know, the positive interaction can be waving at a police officer or just engaging in a conversation. Look, you know, I think you need to do a number of things with public safety. First of all, you need a new leadership team. I think this leadership team is incompetent, and I think you need to replace the current leadership team, and you need to promote officers who are known and respected from within because it's the only way to restore uh, morale. When you have 1,500 officers leave in 18 months and you've only been able to replace 200 of them, that's a vote of no confidence. Secondly, you need to return to super Superintendent Beck, interim Superintendent Beck's strategy of basically push, pushing the police down to the local beats. So you've got a police, you've got a police officer presence uh, on every beat, so that all these beats are covered. So police are working districts uh, uh, and are known to the community and uh, are and in turn know the community. The third thing you have to do is you have to uh, you have to have police focus on proactive policing. And right now, uh, police officers are even afraid to chase someone because of the rules and regulations and guidelines. I mean, th there's like, you know, if you engage in a police chase, there's there's a half a dozen things that could trip you up, or there's a half a dozen things that if you fail to do or boxes you fail to check could result in the city getting sued. So at the end of the day, I believe if you do those three things, that will improve morale. It will slow the exodus of officers. It'll make the police department more attractive to recruit new officers filled with vacancies. And I think that will bring the police closer to the public. Now, Vallis also says he's running on a platform of school choice and expanding charter schools across the city. That position is likely to set him on a collision course with the Chicago Teachers Union. But Vallis says his record of negotiating contracts across four different cities shows he can keep another strike from taking place. There are lots of familiar names who are still mulling over a possible campaign for mayor. One of them, former governor Pat Quinn. Yeah, he's been polling potential voters about issues in Chicago and his own popularity. He insists that's not a sure sign he'll get in the race. The former governor has been a fixture in state politics since the early 1970s, and he bills himself as a fixer who cleaned up Springfield in the post-Blago era. I was the governor of Illinois for six years. Illinois is a lot bigger than Chicago, and uh, I think I navigated our state through some very tough times, tough economic times, tough budget times. Definitely we had to clean things up after Blagojevich and after George Ryan. So I know how to get the job done, and uh, I want to do whatever I can to help the people of Chicago, my city, uh, go forward. And now Quinn won't say whether or not he thinks Mayor Lightfoot should get a second term. Now, Mayor Lightfoot has long danced around the question of when she's going to make it official that she's running for that second term. It appears the answer could finally actually come this week. The mayor hinted at a pending campaign kickoff when asked about the growing list of people who want to take her job. And she's not prepared to go down without a fight. Another day, another man who thinks he can do his job better than me. You know, I'm just going to keep doing my doing my work. I'm not going to worry about the folks who um, are jumping in. I think um, I feel very comfortable um, with the list of accomplishments. Um, and we, what I've got to do is just keep telling our story. And I say our story. Really, it's the story of Chicagoans. It's not about me. It's not about our my accomplishments. It's about what we've done and delivered on behalf of the residents of the city. Um, and I feel confident that as we tell that story and more and more people start to hear it, um, and frankly, the testimony 
testimonials from uh, the people that have been helped, um, we're going to be in, in very good shape. So stay tuned. Soon, soon it's sh shrinking um, as in next week. It's going to be interesting. One more break and we'll be right back.